Damn. Damn, my bad, bro. <laughs> Lines to get that glare out of there sooner and later. 
Good evening, everyone. Well, tonight, we're going to begin the roll call for the board of 
trustee meeting for a regular board meeting that was postponed on April the 1st. And I will begin the roll call. So, Trustee Norwood. Present. Trustee Stan Brown. He's absent. Trustee Tammy Brown. Present. Trustee House. Present. Trustee Belcher. Here. Trustee Holmes. He's absent. And Mayor Kenyard. She's also absent. In the absence of the mayor, I'm going to ask the board right. to appoint the right. mayor pro tem for tonight. I make a motion that we appoint uh, Senior Trustee Jason Allen for mayor pro tem. Yeah. I second. All right. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. We have a quorum. Thank you very much, Clerk Key, and welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm glad to see so many um, smiling faces, some not so smiling, but hopefully we'll get there before the evening's over. Um, we're going to, this, we'll, we'll be getting with the continuation, we're beginning with the continuation of April 1st board meeting. So with that continuation, please tell We're good? Okay, we're going to continuation of last Monday, April 1st board meeting. Uh, that meeting was concluded early because the because there was no access for all people that wanted to come in. So we felt that this space will accommodate all of the residents that want to come and attend. We feel it's important that people have access to have communication and talk to the and talk to the board uh, and, and share their thoughts. Um, so we want to give special thanks to Dalton Park District as always. Uh, we have our president Cleo Jones, board of the commissioners Sandra Wells, Commissioner Kyle Rochelle, Commissioner. Gail Towers and Commissioner Willis Harris, they're, they're towards the back, so please give them a lot of love because I want to make sure we give them a lot of love. Uh, continued support and, and really the, the direction that we, that we would like to be in terms of partnership with one another and all and other community board members, so I want to thank them and make sure we, uh, we extend our internal gratitude for uh, their partnership. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to start because prayer is important. So we'll, we'll first start with the pledge of allegiance, then we'll go prayer, then we're going to reconvene where we left off in the last meeting. Thank you. Thank you. If we can remain standing briefly, I'm going to ask the former trustee Valeria Stubbs, my prayer warrior, if you'll be okay with uh, leading us in prayer, please. Can everybody bow their heads? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the There are, as we may know, and if not, I'll make sure we're clear, there's two, there are two agendas. We are continuing the April 1st agenda, and that's where we're picking this up. Once we reach the conclusion of this agenda, we will adjourn this portion of the meeting and then go directly into our special board meeting, which is the second agenda. So just so everybody have, kind of has a heads up on the direction we're going. Uh, so for general announcements, I'll yield to any trustee if there's any general announcements. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, we have a special surprise today, and um, we don't take stuff lightly that goes on um, in Dalton. So I know a lot of people see stuff that's happening on YouTube, on Facebook, and different things. The reason I'm standing up because I seen something on Facebook last week that really struck a nerve to me. Um, we are not responsible for what our police officers do. We will hope that they would do what's in the best interest of the community. 
But the video that went out with Miss um, Hill getting put out and that baby crying really touched me because it was like you were ruining a special moment for a little child. So today we wanted to make sure that he won't look at Easter so in a negative way. Miss Hill, are you here? Come on. Miss Hill. Chicago G in the building. I don't think they knew either. where you can get vital information this Saturday right here in this building in this location. 9.30 a.m. We have an awesome time. It gives the residents time to ask questions and get answers. So this is a Q&A session. It's not a um, at the board meeting where the residents ask a question and then we'll see you later. So definitely Saturday, we're asking everyone in this room so please come out and attend. Tea with the trustees is every second Saturday. Of the to the building. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, we have environmental day hosted by Senator Napoleon Harris, April 22nd. It's at South Suburban College from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So if you have any old items. Uh, recyclables, to shred papers, medicine, they'll be able to do that from 1 to 3 is environment today um, on April 22nd. Um, also, uh, Trustee House, when we get a chance, can we uh, have a moment of silence for Cook County Clerk uh, Karen Yarbrough? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Happy Monday. I'm so happy to see everyone today. Um, everyone's warm and inside. This is the day. Um, I just have a couple of announcements. So we do have um, our third annual skate family skating night. Um, you all know my saying: those who the family who skates together stays together. Okay. So come on out, um, it's June 7th, um, it's that Friday. It will be held at Linwood Skating Rink um, on 2030 Glenwood Dye Road, right there in Linwood. Uh, come and join us. 
feel free to register, please. If you are a Dalton resident, um, it's totally free, and I would love to have you all, as usual. Um, call me, 708-968-4297, or email me at uh, bnorwood at villageofdalton.org. Um, oh, and just a bonus for this Saturday, I know Trustee Brown invited you all out. Uh, we do have a bonus this weekend for the seniors. Um, we do have Cook County coming out, and for all seniors who need to keep their senior exemption in place for the taxes, come on out, uh, bring your, your tax form, and we're going to um, make it a one-stop shop for you, right? So we're going to do everything in one place. We can fellowship and take care of business at the same time. So please join us. Thank you. Sorry, I have one last announcement. Uh, the Southland Career Fair is going to be April the 24th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's going to be at the William Bill Shaw Recreation, Recreation Center right down the street here, 715 Eagles. If you're looking for a new job, creating new opportunities, and trying to advance your career, grab your resume and come prepared to make your best first impression. This is an opportunity for seasoned professionals and entry-level applicants to meet with recruiters face-to-face -to, -face to learn about open positions. All are welcome to attend, and this career fair is put on by Dalton Park District, Senator Napoleon Harris, and Neighborhood Housing Services. So you can definitely see me after the meeting um, if you want to attend. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, trustees. We have um, next on our agenda is the, is the village clerk's report and approval of meeting minutes. So I yield the input to the clerk. Key. Thank you, Mayor Fulton. Um, I am requesting the board's approval of the regular board meeting minutes from March the fourth, twenty twenty-four. So moved. Second. Okay, Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you very much, Board. Thank you. Uh, there are several reports on here that we do not have um, department heads or individuals present, so we will be skipping village administrators' report, engineers' report, uh, department reports, police, fire, public works, water, housing, building, and code enforcement, and we'll go next immediately into our warrant list uh, payments that we were that we need to approve. Um, in doing so, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the, the electronic AP warrant list, removing the following items: Aurelio's Pizza for one thirty one sixty three, Cooper's Hawk five hundred fifty seven dollars sixty eight cents, Dollar Tree one hundred forty five dollars thirty two cents, Food for Less one hundred seven dollars ninety nine cents, Irie Jerk Cut one thousand three hundred fifty six dollars twenty two cents, Johnny T Bistro and Blues ninety dollars thirty cents. Kirk's Barbecue, $676, and Ruby's, Ruby Soul Food, $674. Sophia Tamales and Corn, $2,400. Southeastern Skate Supply, $17,500. And the Tasty Crab, $458.79. So my motion is to approve the warrant list, removing the items listed. And I'll ask for a second. Second. Okay, here a motion and second. Any discussion from the board? Clerk, please roll call. Sure. Trustee Nola? Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Belgium? Aye. Motion passed. Okay. So next is the approval of our accounts payable warrant list. Um, I motion that we approve the warrant lists, removing the following items. On page 5, Delgado Law Room, $48,001.15. Existing concrete, $14,123.03. Five Star, $122,325 even. John's Pro Trees, $155,000 even. KNM Ventures, $183,950 even. Lopez Lawn Maintenance, $10,050. Mosca Design, $65,700. Podparski and Sons, $32,360. Raul and Sons, $181,950. And White Coat Pool Solutions, $34,788.58. I have a motion is to approve the AP, the AP warrant list, removing items listed. Is there a second? Second. Okay, hearing the motion and second, uh, what was one on here? I think that we wanted to, Mosca Design. 
might have that uh, invoice in the library. I don't know what that one is. I, I don't have a good, but I'll tell you a little bit. The Moscow Designs was the 122 banners for $19,888. And also the uh, $65,000 for the Christmas ornaments that still come on nightly. So those are those two uh, invoices. And as of last week, Friday, they still have not been paid. And we were told that the check has been sent out. I talked to the vendor Friday, no payment for the banners, nor payment for the Christmas ones. Thank you. I just like to reiterate, um, if anybody watched the March meeting, when we had discussion about these items and uh, uh, the $65,700 came up, if you go to one hour and 35 minutes, our finance director said that the items had to be paid in cash. And we're still waiting on the receipts. And if they had been paid in cash, why is this vendor still contacting us asking for payment? So when people go and say things, everything is recorded. And it goes back to our transparency and lack thereof that we're not getting information that we're requesting. Because as soon as she said it, I instantly raised my high when we start paying $65,000 in cash anyway. And then for this vendor to still contact us, emailing us saying that she hasn't been paid, really draws concern. Where's the money? Thank you, trustees. No, no additional comment. I'm going to ask for a key for a roll call, please. Do you have a comment? Real quick, um, I, I, have, I have heard some, had some residents contact me over the last few days. Uh, I know one of the invoices on there uh, was for the $17,000 for skates. Um, this is part of the reason why we have to dig so deep into this because once before, um, we did vote on skates, and Trustee Belcher asked the administration where the skates were located so that everyone can have access, and she basically was told that it's not of her concern. So when we um, look into something like the ice skating rink, I want everyone to know that, um, as trustees, it's not that I'm not a favorable ice skating rink, but when the residents say, well, well, how much is it? Well, when is the operating hours? Um, these are the things that are a concern for us, and this is what we mean when we talk about transparency. Um, we need to have this information so that we can tell a resident, well, it's from this time. It's not fair that we spent $1.3 million that wasn't approved by the board on this ice skating rink, but the ice skating rink can be only accessible when the administration want to use it for their private events. It's just not fair to the residents, especially when we're using taxpayers' money. So um, that's my stand on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so hearing no further discussion, I'll ask Kirk Keefe for roll call, please. Again, this vote is for Corporate Bill's AP warrant list, with the exceptions that Trustee House mentioned. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Motion passed to pay AP warrant list with the exceptions that were mentioned by Trustee House. All right, next on the agenda, there's no old business. We'll go to new business. Item A is a motion to terminate contract for Olson, Murphy, Fraser, McGrath, and as legislative counsel. Attorney Olson, you want to make this motion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll ask, is there a motion to terminate the contract? Hearing no motion that, uh, that fails to proceed. Next on the agenda is a motion to override the mayor's veto message that was issued on March 4th, 2024. Yes, I am going, I will make the motion to override and elaborate if we have a second. So we'll see if we have a second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Just for clarity, this motion is to override all items listed in the veto. In that veto, it listed, it vetoed item one, the transferring of litigation files from Delgado Law Group to Otis and Murphy, Frazier, and McGrath. Item two that was vetoed, a referring referring the Delgado Law Group to the appropriate agency for misconduct, essentially. Uh, item three, a motion to, the, the motion to approve 
payment of the invoices, old specified invoices, old to Olds and Murphy's, Frazier and McGrath. Item four, the directing the village administrator to provide access key cards to the trustees so that we can have our meeting at Village Hall. And the clerk as well. <laughs> Item five, directing the village administrator to make payments on, well, to tender all payments made to the village for any reason, including Las Vegas junkets, the mayor's Tahoe car payments, and security deal from January, June 1st to present. And those, and then those records should have been turned over within seven days. That, had not, that has not, not occurred, and that was vetoed, and now we're here to override that. Item six, all monetary payments to Delgado Law Group will only continue in his capacity as village prosecutor, which is what he was originally approved for. Item seven being the discussion and approval of the intergovernmental agreement the board approved with Dalton Park District. Uh, that intergovernmental agreement was put in place so that the Park District can get ne permits needed to uh, receive a $600,000 grant to beautify the parks. That was vetoed and we are here to override that today. Definitely not least, item number eight was the approval of resolution 24-002, which called for the investigation of Mayor Tiffany Hinder. understands that teamwork makes the dream work. Black, black, black. So we're supposed to be coming together. Um, my 17 year old, he attended uh, the Dalton Park summer camp for like four or five years straight. I mean, it's a wonderful place. It was a nice place for the summer for him to have something to do. And these are the type of things we want to support, not just as a trustee, but as a resident. I want other parents to experience what I experienced. Um, my son got to the point where he's like, okay, mom, I'm just getting too old. But now that he's retired, I'm looking forward to seeing new youth there. Um, and then secondly, he mentioned the keys to Dole Village. Um, that one's extremely important because it brought tears to my eyes to see that at the last meeting, we had our seniors standing outside in the cold. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't make much mention of it, but during an election, I was running um, that December before election. I lost my grandmother, and then uh, two, three months later, I lost my great-grandmother, and I lost them both before the election. But what is funny is that God worked in mysterious ways, right? I lost two grandmothers, but God gave me about a hundred more. And uh, when I see my grandparents standing outside, it, I was, I was kind of um, upset. Right? This is our village, and we all should have access to it, not just the trustees. I mean, we're all one beat, one sound, one community, and I think that that's the most important thing that us as trustees are just trying to get through to the community. We are all one. So if you all can't come inside the building to conduct a meet, guess what? There will be no meet because there is no meet without the residents. How do we discuss business pertaining to them without you all? It, that would really make no sense. So I just want you all to know that uh, we did hear you all and we seen you all and that was the reason why we're here today. So now that you all are safe and sound and you all made it today, I just thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for your support. And um, we're gonna get those keys to this village guy. <laughs> thank you very much, Trustee Norwood. Any other discussion at this time? Okay, hearing none, I will ask uh, Clerk Key for a roll call. Item number 13B, override of the mayor's veto issued on March 4th, 2024. Trustee Norwood? 
Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Motion passed. <laughs> to the, the adjourn one item that I did uh, neglect the general announcement, so I want to make sure I mention it. Yeah. Our former commissioner here for the Park District, Kevin Bowens, will be hosts the largest giveaway in the South Summer uh, Christmas in July, so be on the lookout for more to come on that because that, uh, really we have so many toys and things will be a great opportunity, so please be on the lookout as we proceed. Uh, but uh, this is going to conclude the continuation of last week's meeting, so we're going to do a motion to adjourn on that and then move into our special board meeting. So I'll make a motion that we adjourn the regular board meeting or the continuation of the regular board meeting. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay, here a motion and second. I was clerk key for a roll call. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Meeting adjourn, adjourn at 6.57 p.m. So as I transition, I just want to make sure I'm calling the next meeting to order in the proper manner. As attorney, um, attorney Odelson to <laughs> no, attorney Odelson on the, on the right language count. Directly into it. Uh, trustee House, the uh, next meeting is the special board of trustees meeting called by uh, three members of the board pursuant to the uh, code of ordinances of the village of Dalton for the matters that pertain to the agenda, which has been duly uh, issued and posted, uh, I believe, last Thursday. Okay, so do we need to roll call again? Okay, so we'll go right into roll call. I'll ask Clerk Key if she can give us a roll call, please. Sure, we will not. Um, Trustee Norwood. Trustee Stanley Brown, absent. Trustee Tammy Brown, present. Trustee House, present. Trustee Holmes, absent. Trustee Belcher, here. And Mayor Henry is absent. Okay, and um, again, we need to motion. I have a motion for Mayor Pro Tem for this meeting as well. I'll second. I'll make a, I'll make a motion for Senior Trustee Jason House to be Mayor Pro Tem for the special board meeting. Uh, April 8, 2024. Okay. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Tenny Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Motion passed to appoint Trustee Janice Brown as Mayor Pro Tem. Can you hear me? Thank you very much. Uh, so we will, we will dive right in. We've done the uh, Pledge of Allegiance as well as the prayer. Uh, there is no old business. Item A we re will be removed because we did not get sufficient documentation to proceed with the discussion on updated state of Illinois rock salt contract, so that will be pushed to a, another agenda. Items B and C. So for items B and C, I will make a motion to amend items B, 5B, and 5C to appoint Lori Lightfoot as special investigator to the village of Dalton at a rate of $400 per hour to investigate the following matters. One, the May 2023 Las Vegas trip, including all expenditures, all allegations of misconduct, and all internal investigations, if any, along with any village, state, and federal law violations. Two, the spending of ARPA funding without going out for bid and or failing to properly spend ARPA funds. Three, failure to provide a full accounting of all ARPA funds spent. Four, hiring contractors without going to bid or requesting the RFP. Five, sit five, hiring the contractors without the approval of the corporate authorities. Six, making payments to vendors without the approval of the corporate authorities. And seven, paying the village prosecutor Delgado Law Group over $900,000 over the last two and a half years. Um, so we're gonna do a motion, and I'll, I'll make that motion, I'll ask for a second, and we'll go into discussion thereafter to uh, further examine. So I made a motion for a second. Second. Okay. Hearing a motion and second, first I will um, ask Attorney Olson to 
uh, further dive into the, the resolution. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, on the original agenda are two resolutions uh, uh, hiring uh, Ms. Lightfoot as a, a additional legislative counsel. Uh, I received a letter today uh, from the Delgado Law Group uh, threatening uh, me and this board that if we proceeded along this route, uh, there would be litigation and uh, grave consequences. Uh, and, and advising that uh, any actions we do here uh, are uh, in violation of the Open Meetings Act and against the law. Um, I re remind you, this is the same Delgado Law Group who uh, just received the invoices from the last two and a half years, including March, will be uh, over $950,000. Uh, so rather than, rather than fight another lawsuit and spend more money on more lawyers, we amended the, uh, the motion tonight. Uh, the resolutions were to appoint uh, Ms. Lightfoot, uh, and that's what the motion uh, is. Uh, and rather than appoint her as a legislative counsel, which is our, our title, uh, directly as a special investigator is, is, a, is more than appropriate. Again, we're looking to get down to the facts as to what's going on in the village and how the money's been spent uh, or not spent. So rather than uh, fight over this in court, we uh, um, amended the motion. Uh, people are here tonight because they know on the agenda is the proposed hiring of uh, a very learned uh, former federal prosecutor uh, to help the trustees sort out what's going on in the village over the last two years as far as uh, misappropriation and misspending. That's why we amended the motion, the, uh, the, the agenda as it's uh, stated, to try to avoid yet another lawsuit. Uh, thank you, Bert. Thank you, Board. Uh, at this time, uh, it is my privilege to introduce Corey E. Lightfoot, uh, who most of you I'm uh, sure are familiar with who she is. But what you might not be familiar with is uh, her, her background, professional, so I'd like to just breeze through it and then Ms. Lightfoot's going to step up and, and make a brief comment. Um, Ms. Lightfoot graduated from the University of Michigan in 1984 with a bachelor's degree in political science. She's also a graduate from the University of Chicago in 1989 with a Juris Doctor degree, uh, which is necessary to get your, your law degree. Uh, she then worked as an assistant U.S. attorney in the Criminal Division for the Northern District of Illinois from 1996 to 2002, where she prosecuted uh, a whole slew of different types of uh, criminal cases, uh, but notably she uh, prosecuted cases that involved public corruption. She then worked, uh, is, was appointed the Chief Administrator for the Chicago Police Department Office of Professional Standards uh, in that capacity from 2002 to 2004. She was Chief of Staff and General Counsel uh, for the Chicago Office of Emergency Management and Communications from July 2004 to February 2005. Uh, she was acting, I'm sorry, she was the acting first deputy procurement officer for the City of Chicago Department of Procurement Services, February 2005 through October 2005. She's a past president of Chicago Police Board from 2015-2018, she was co-chair Chicago Police Accountability Task Force in 2016, and as we all know, she was uh, the mayor for the city of Chicago for a four-year term. Uh, with that background, I would like to introduce Lori E. Lightfoot. Uh, who have extended themselves 
and given me strong words of encouragement. I can tell from this turnout, there's got to be close to 200 people here, um, that people in this village want something different, want to go in a different direction. And I want to assure you that it's for you that I am here. And I will do my utmost um, if this motion uh, is passed to make sure that I serve you with integrity. I also want to acknowledge and thank um, the trustees who are here. Um, and thank you for um, your confidence in me to conduct a thorough and timely and independent investigation into the matters outlined in the motion regarding uh, Mayor Tiffany Henyard and her administration. As someone who's made good governance, the cornerstone of my public service career, I recognize maintaining the trust of those you serve and making decisions in their best interest is absolutely essential. The residents of Dalton deserve nothing less than a government that is fully accountable, responsive, transparent, and effective stewards of your precious tax dollars. As a lawyer and former federal prosecutor and mayor, I bring expertise in leading investigations of this kind and understand the complex challenges of government. I will commit to you that I will follow the facts where they lead without bias and reserve comments um, from this night forward until the work is complete. At the conclusion of this investigation, I will provide an assessment of the findings and the recommendations. And I welcome and urge the full cooperation by Mayor Henyard, her staff, all village trustees, vendors, and others who have information relevant to this inquiry. Thank you very much. And then I'll go back to sit down. I'll go back to sit down with you. Thank you. Again. Thank you, Mayor. We appreciate your presence and your willingness to um, in this endeavor. Uh, because, in, in general, we want to make sure that we get feedback. And because of the nature and some of the urgency, this process has gone a little bit faster. So before we take a, before we take a formal vote, I do want to kind of pause and open to any questions. Because I know there are many questions. There were many questions, and there are uh, some I feel that we may have answered, and some may not have been answered. So if there are any questions from residents, we. We're going to take questions on this agenda item only at this time. We will follow with public comments, which can be open to any discussion. But we want to make sure first that um, we do not let haste um, bypass a process that allow residents the opportunity to speak. So having said, so having said that at this time, I would ask if there are any questions that residents have that we may not have answered, uh, that those may maybe come line up towards the middle, and then we will uh, entertain any questions at this time. Hello everyone. Hello. Hello. I have a couple of questions. One for me. I'm just doing as someone who was trying to be at this meeting wasn't able to come. So let me go to the mic. Into the mic. Let me preface my comment by saying, thank you, Lori Lifeway. Thank you. So I wanted one of the questions is, um, because we know that this is going to cost, right, um, and I'm all for it, was there another option such as, you know, some of the assistance we've gotten from the governor perhaps, or congressman or any other appointed official that could represent us 
at no cost. Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, and yes, this does come at a cost. Uh, this board specifically has made reaches to the state's attorney, attorney general, governor's office, and as we know, there are ongoing, well, it's been reported that there's ongoing uh, investigations from federal entities. Uh, those entities, as we know, can take anywhere from two months to five years, and, and we do not get the findings. Uh, we feel this option will give us um, an independent process because we, because we will, from this point forward, we will step back, allow Mayor Lightfoot to do her, to do her findings. There will be check-ins primarily to make sure, and then the resolution, there are, there are check-in points to make sure that we do not, uh, that the bill does not become insurmountable. So there's a check-in point at $30,000, and then we will we'll assess cooperation and where we're, and where we're where it's going and make decisions from that point, including the community, on how to move forward. Separately, we do. We are also going into the next budget season. May, May 1st comes a new fiscal budget, and the Board of Trustees fully was already in the planning process to seek a forensic audit as well as investigation and put funds in for that. Uh, so that's the funding that we are seeking to use to go towards this, this endeavor. Answered all the questions that I had on this list. Thank you. Good afternoon, all, or good evening, I guess I should say. A lot of the questions were just answered. And I spoke with Jason, and I reached out to a lot of the citizens. And I said, now is your opportunity. Talking to each other is not the answer. If you've got a question, tonight is the night to ask it. So if you do, think twice about getting in the line. My question is this, and thank you. I know she's going to do a good job. We had a little private conversation, <laughs> a little female conversation. Anyway, um, what happens with the information? Do, I know you probably got a pipeline, Troy, you know, to get it to <laughs> somewhere. I'm not putting your business out there because I don't really know. But we just want to know that once we get what we're looking for, what happens next? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, and what the board does next depends on what the contents of the report is and in which way we have to go. We have tried lawsuits. Uh, all he has done is uh, rack up more attorney's fees. We have tried, as, as Mayor Pro Tem House said, going to the proper authorities. Uh, and as every day goes by, and you heard tonight from Trustee House how many items were removed from the agenda for payments, the village loses more money. So the bleeding has to stop. Uh, Hiring uh, Mayor Lightfoot to do a uh, prompt investigation will lead the board to where they need to go as to the next step. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Greetings to the citizens of Dalton. Greetings to uh, all officials at the uh, dais here and media. Uh, is it uh, appropriate to address a question to the like to, is that okay? Or should I address everything to them? Is that okay? Okay, gotcha. Hey, you're my boss. You can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I understand you have some uh, experience with the police board. We have this. Speak up. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, like that I understand you have some experience with the police board uh, in your resume. Uh, we have a very serious police situation <laughs> in uh, Dalton. Uh, a very serious uh, problem. Uh, it's gotten to the point where what just happened would have gotten the media, we would have gotten all of us kicked out of here if we were at the meeting last week, which by the way, I'm still shaking water out of my shoes because I was out there for two and a half hours. Okay, and as well as a lot of other people. But we also have a situation where they're taking police, police off of the streets and bringing them in to buy herd on people, citizens, taxpayers, that come in here to ask legitimate questions. 
that uh, police are being used to blockade streets. I just want to be assured that if the police come into this to, to the degree that we've seen, uh, can we be confident that, that you can take this to the proper authority? Basically, I'm asking about subpoena power for some of these things. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that subpoena power will be part of this because I haven't seen anything else work up to this point. Um, I'd also like to address a, a national issue that we don't want to bring here to Dalton necessarily. Uh, we've seen the smear jobs on female prosecutors, and I don't have to mention any names, but we've seen the smears and the attacks on female prosecutors throughout the country. Uh, I'm sure you're prepared for that, but I just want to make everyone aware of the fact that the things that are happening nationally could very well end up happening here, and that will not derail the investigations, but distract and deflect uh, all kinds of attacks from people that do not want this uh, situation to move forward. So, uh, thank you for your indulgence. I just had a couple of questions. I don't want to get personal with anything, but I just need some answers as far as those things are concerned. Well, let me, uh, thank you, sir, first of all. And let me address the, uh, let me stand up. Let me address the first, the last question. Um, look, I've been in uh, lots of uh, different situations over the course of my career, certainly as a lawyer, as a prosecutor, um, and even as a mayor. Um, and anybody who knows me knows that I don't intimidate easy. Yes, when you're a black woman, the world views you through a different lens. Um, and particularly when you're a black woman who aspires to leadership, a black woman who assumes um, a position of authority, there are lots of people who are going to be naysayers. I never let that um, derail me. If, again, if the, I don't want to be presumptuous, but if the trustees vote for uh, this appointment, I can assure you that I will block out the noise, I will follow the facts where they lead me, and I will be um, guided by the motion and the specific items in that uh, that I am required uh, to address. Um, I can't say that on your first issue, that that's necessarily within the scope of the mandate that I expect to be given. But I hear you loud and clear, and importantly, your elected officials, I think, hear you loud and clear, and there are, cl there are clear things that can be done to address the issues that you've identified. So I hope that's satisfactory answer. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. To the board and to Dalton. I'm concerned about Dalton, and I do not want history to repeat itself. When I think about how Tiffany Henyard got in this position, it is very bothersome. And I don't want that to happen again. So for the ex-mayor of Chicago, we want to first make sure that you do not have a personal relationship with Tiffany. Because I have seen pictures with you and Tiffany on them together. We want to also make sure that there's not a bait and switch like it happened with Tiffany. Tiffany made all these promises. You thought she was going to do this, you thought she was going to do that, and we're in this position. So, no disrespect to you, but we want to just make sure that we're making the right decision and that history does not repeat itself. Well, sir, um, again, thank you for your questions. I don't know specifically what history you're talking about. I, 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 let me just finish my, my point. Um, I obviously know uh, Mayor Henyard as I do most of the mayors in the Southland, um, having been the mayor of Chicago. Not surprised that you're going to see a picture of me. Ms. Henyard takes pictures with lots of people. Um, <laughs> But what I can assure you is, I do not have any personal relationship with her, and frankly, I don't have a professional relationship with her. I think the last time I had any contact with her was probably three plus years ago, um, right after she was sworn in um, as mayor of, of Dalton. So um, I'm not surprised, and I raise this issue, frankly, proactively uh, with uh, the trustees and uh, council, but I, I value my reputation and my integrity. Um, and I would, I would not have taken on 
um, the contemplation of this assignment if I felt like there was any conflict of interest. Again, to follow up, what I said was not to, to insult you. No, I, no insult, no offense um, was taken by me. I understand the, the question that you were raising. I think I've addressed the question. Um, so I think we should move on. To address your question, it was just, where did I get that from? When I said baby squeegee, I figured personally, it was just simply because how Tiffany got into this position. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. A, a, a very necessary question. So uh, thank you for that question. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor, for your response. Uh, yes. Good evening, every, uh, everyone. Sister Lightfoot, I'm handing you my torch, my blessing, my faith, and the, the abundance of everything that I've been here, dog. So that's how I'm going to go on that. To the board, I don't know how to start. Thank you. To you, wonderful residents. Y'all, some powerful people out there. Y'all, just keep on coming because it's not going to stop. It's only going to bring better back to dog, and that's all. We deserve, and to you wonderful taxpayers, thank y'all for not turning into gypsies on this community and just leaving out of here. Because right now, this is what the full bang of unity actually <laughs> looks like and means. And if any other community is going through this, y'all got to do the same thing. You know, it's always some hard work. If everything was easy, we know how that would go. And once again, we keep saying her name, Alexis Wilson, <laughs> Darius Wilson. We're yeah. saying that young man that had his life taken. We, we, we just don't have a despair anymore. We don't have a despair like that because that's what it means. We cannot replace another life, not one person without, you know. And to anyone that did seen that, the one thing I know is, you know, did it take us back to a child can change some things, can't it? Y'all have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Uh, we will also be opening for public comment after this one, uh, for after this component. We still do have the, the official vote, but we do want to make sure uh, individuals can ask questions of the board as well as Mayor Lightfoot if necessary. Hello, my name is Gloria Johnson. I am a 26 year homeowner resident of the city of the village, the small village of Dalton. Um, and the question that I want to ask I want to know anybody going to go to jail? <laughs> you know, if you're asking for a transparency, she's treating people like a joke. When you ask her a question, when she asks, when you ask her a question because she gets asked, and then uh, when you got to the vote, she walked out and she started talking about the media. So I'm going to know who does that. You know, this is a really, really small community. I'm from Chicago originally. The, 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 I'm from Inglewood, and the proud member formerly to be from Inglewood. This is a very small community. We see each other at Walgreens, School of the Left, Dallas Store, uh, Taco Place. Everywhere we see each other in the town. Uh, and I just would like to know what is going to be done, even about the trustees that don't show up. And another thing about the police. <laughs> the police that stand in front of you and on the side of you like you're a criminal. And a real criminal is the mayor. Yeah. With the, the, the wretchedness. I mean, it's just really pathetic to, to call people on the phone and you give them your address and you say, Dalton, Illinois? Are you friends with that? That mayor, I never heard, I never seen anyone that's from that little town. What is going on there? A lot is going on here, but I want to know what are we going to do about it? She has wonderful ideas. I even took part in some of the ideas she did. You know, uh, the Halloween party was beautiful. Her attire wasn't totally offensive and inappropriate. I've been watching the police. People don't want to sit up here and talk. We, we think that our house is going to be shot up. You know? It doesn't make any sense, but I understand that the former mayor is here, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. I see the, you know, the lawyers are sitting here, but what are they going to do? You know, how are they going to get her out of here and the two trustees and the police department? To, 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 to. Say one more thing. I kind of talk a lot. They say I'm long-winded. 
I'm going to say this. You're going to be lying? The police department is harassing the residents of Dalton, trying to arrest people and put people in jail. So, the next meeting we go to, will they be there? Can they not be there harassing people? Just, just to uh, quickly address what you said, uh, this body, uh, Norm Mayor Lightfoot, uh, have, have uh, criminal functions. In other words, we can't bring actions in the criminal court. What we can do and what uh, Ms. Lightfoot is being hired to do is find facts. And once this board, through the reports that we get, have the facts, the facts can be turned over to appropriate authorities who then will act appropriately. But we, we, we legislate here and we uh, govern the village. We're supposed to govern the village. Uh, we don't uh, indict people or we don't criminally go after them. As far as the police goes, uh, I believe that once the facts are flushed out and whatever happens to the two trustees who don't come and the mayor, uh, I believe based on my experience in municipalities, that that will straighten itself out also. But just, it's just, I'm, I'm sorry to say we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, but we're not fine, we're on the right track. But the police to be, I wanna know the police in Dalton to be straightened out. Um, yeah, so the investigation itself will provide us information that we can share with other authorities. Um, and that's the direction that we're looking to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just to reiterate, um, this is just for a discussion of high grant investigator um, Lori Lightfoot. We will still have public comment. And the reason I said that is because Ms. Lightfoot still has to leave and we have to conduct the business. So right now, this is only discussion about um, high grant uh, Ms. Lori Lightfoot. So, Madam Mayor, thank you for being here. But let's kind of game this out. As citizens, we've done FOIA requests for a number of different issues that have not gone, like we haven't gotten the information that we need. And I understand your history, I understand who you are, but what makes you different than every other citizen who's requested information Because at the end of the day, she's going to stonewall you as she stonewalled the citizens. And so I guess my question for you, and I'm glad you're here, and I want you to be a part of this because I'm hoping you'll get results, but at the end of the day, we haven't gotten results from simple FOIA requests. How are you going to be different? That's a great question. Um, and what I will say without, I think, giving away all of my strategy and strategy that we need to uh, get buy-in with the trustees on the assumption that I'm appointed, um, FOIA isn't optional, it's mandatory. And I recognize that uh, people put in any number of FOIA requests. Um, I'm not expecting, I'm expecting that there will be some roadblocks, but ultimately I'm expecting that we will get the information that's needed to be able to understand the breadth of uh, what's been going on based upon the issues that are outlined uh, in the motion. I'm a very determined person. And I think, um, with due respect, the thing that makes me different um, is having dealt with FOIA for years and years, and certainly um, a significant amount during my tenure as, as mayor. Um, there are certain things that I think can be done and should be done by people who have power and oversight in the state of a FOIA. I hope it doesn't need to get to that, but if it does, then so be it. I, again, I meant what I said earlier in my remarks. It is my sincere hope um, that Mayor Hendren um, and people in her administration uh, will um, voluntarily <coughs> cooperate, but should they not, then we are prepared to do what is necessary to get to the facts. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sparkle Brown. I am a 16-year resident of Dalton. 
My question is, after we take the vote today, we go ahead with Ms. Lightfoot. What happens after that? Because what I don't want to see is another veto, and we go down this rabbit hole and going back and forth. When does that stop? When can we stop this going back and forth and get something done? So you know it's not obvious that a veto will happen. And, but we have the majority. And the four of us sit here and don't take this lightly at all. Because we knew it would be pushed back. We knew it would be, we all said the same thing the um, gentleman just said. She's not gonna give you nothing like she don't give nobody else nothing. But at the point where we override the veto, we are, we are committed to making sure that whatever we can assist with Ms. Lightfoot to get information, you gotta understand, we're bleeding right now. Yes. And bleeding leads to death. Yes. And this is death of a community. Yes. And we have to stop it. So yes, it will be a, a veto. We, we know that it's coming, but we know that we have more people that will sit here and continue to fight for our community and override the veto. Affirmatively passes the motion tonight. Uh, Ms. Life starts tomorrow. And, and yeah. if, if there is to be a veto, then so be it. We'll deal with that, but the investigation will not be impeded after tonight. Greetings, greetings. Uh, I want to. I said, unless I mean, it's a statement. I want people to realize. Not too many elected officials want to open up the floor to unscripted questions. You don't know where it's coming from. That's called transparency. That's called good government. Please give a round of applause for that. So none of these, none of these questions, we didn't, nobody was pointed in the crowd to say this, say that. They weren't paid to come up here and say this. They're taking the questions on the chin and answering. So that, that goes a long way in government. I just want to say that. So my, my question is just, I'm an independent journalist. Um, I came into Dalton to investigate and to cover what's going on here. I've been threatened by the Dalton Police Department. They threatened to put me in a jail cell. They, they've, Chief Lacey has personally pulled out handcuffs against me and threatened to arrest me. Why isn't this investigator being tasked with the job of investigating the police corruption? There's no police officers here, but at the last meeting they were you know, very aggressive with the residents here. And why isn't this investigator investigating the police department, which seems to be very corrupt? So I'll answer all that. I'll let Attorney Olson. As we look into it, there's there's a two prong thing that we're trying to do. We have, we want to get answers to the questions that are out there. We also have to monitor in terms of cost how we how, what direction we want to go in. Uh, we most certainly, and I'll say certainly because the point, the point of opening this point portion up is to make sure that we're getting feedback from the community. So as we hear more, we can further amend this agreement to expand it into the police department or anywhere that the uh, community would like us to go. I'm pretty sure they wanted us to get the police department. And, and as such, we do need to make sure as well uh, that, that increases the budget, but we're, that we're here to do the will of the people. And if that's what the people insist, that's what we will do. Hello, Mayor. How are you? Boy, it's such an honor and a privilege. I've been watching everything online, and tonight I decided to come up. But one of the questions that I have after you conclude your investigation and the board turns it over to elected officials. What happens there? That's the first question. And the second question, haven't you all already submitted the information to the officials? That's a very good question. And what we have has been turned over to the appropriate authorities, but we don't have everything. And we don't know what we don't know. And what we don't know are all of the FOIAs that have gone unanswered 
and they have gone up the chain that the village of Dalton has been sued for, and he has, to, he has had to pay out money because the FOIAs have gone unanswered. Uh, the mayor took the, uh, from the clerk, who was the FOIA officer, took it out of her hands, and it is run through her office. The trustees get no mail. All the mail goes through the mayor. Uh, I can go on and on and on. So we, we've turned over what we have, and we will then turn over what the report says we don't have and should have. Thank you. So thank you. At this point, seeing nobody left, we're going to conclude the the questions. I want to um, further yield to board, any board members, any comments or statements we have at this time. this journey two and a half years ago. We did a recall and people looked at us like, oh, it's just five people that got up one morning and don't like her. And we now seven million dollars plus in debt. And it was a little helpful because I said, did, did, did they not believe us? We seen it. And we've reached out to all of these people that want us to go and vote for them. Attorney General, vote for them. Yes. State's Attorney, vote for them. Love Governor. Yes. They will not vote, but will not help us. Right. So when we do this, we're doing this for you guys. Me included. But we're doing this because we have to take a stand that the information that's not given to us we have to have someone else come in to try to, now we, we said the same thing, you know what, she ain't gonna get up, she ain't gonna give her nothing, but maybe she has more authority to get what we're missing, to yeah. seal this deal and take our community back. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Discussion. Um, hearing no further discussion at this time, I'll ask Clerk Key for a roll call. Sure. Um, this was motioned by Mayor Pro Tem House and Trustee Belcher that we amend agenda items 5B and 5C to appoint Lori E. Lightfoot as special investigator for the village of Dalton at a rate of $400 to investigate matters read by Mayor Pro Tem Justy, Trustee House, Mayor Pro Tem House. Trustee Norwood. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. <laughs>
You're 100% right. So uh, I want to make sure that we do everything we can to incorporate the feedback from the residents, and that's um, it is, it's critical. So that uh, goes a long way for us. Uh, having said that, we do but we do still have public comment as the final item on this agenda. There is a uh, I will ask for a three minute. We we recognize the frustration. We recognize. Uh, being limited, so I, I say a soft three minutes. As your three minutes comes, I will wave the phone just kind of as a reminder, you know. Um, but we want to hear any, any additional comments that residents have at this time. Please come forward. I would like to say, uh, Trustee House's property talking about being uh, <laughs> we did have that conversation, uh, oh, but well, earlier, and, and my take on is it's good with the residents is good with me. Again, we work for you. So collectively, it's what the residents want is the way, uh, the direction that this board is going. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Stanley Wright. I've been a Dalton resident for three years now. And I would like to ask, uh, y'all mentioned about the commissioners earlier. Uh, could y'all bring them up so I can know who they are? I'll ask the Park District Commissioners, please come forward if, uh, if your heart so desires. Uh, one of our constituents is seeking presence. Yeah, I see, I see, uh, yeah. Any park district commissioners, if you'd like to come forward, uh, we do have a resident who just wants to make sure we give acknowledgement. Oh, or, if it's okay, I'll call them out and wave, that'd be fine for you. Yes, sir. All right, oh, we got President Jones in the very back, wave his hand there. I see Commissioner Kyle Rochelle. I see Commissioner Sandra Wells. And which department is one of them? Oh, that's this park district here. So we're not a department. They're over the entire, they, they govern the entire park district. Okay, I want to know who the uh, water commissioner and all that. You know, well, I want to make a resolution or something to say, I get a bill, water bill, every month. I mean, every three months, okay? But I don't know if this resonates with everybody, but uh, we pay water bills, and we, we have people to come and read your meter. Why do I get a letter telling me to read my own meter? I don't, I don't understand that. I'm paying you to read my meter, and my water bill is high. And I'm not, it's only two people living in my home. Uh, but we all work in community. We have, I work every Monday through Friday, 8, 8 a.m., to 5 p.m. They work the same hours. I'm not at home to come in for you to let you in my house. Why don't they have somebody on Saturdays from 7 to 12 or something? I don't understand. Uh, okay, so two things. Uh, don't go away, sir. Don't leave me. I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> so um, if you do have an estimated water bill, um, we do have an ordinance that says that they should enter your house once a year. So if you're not available, then you should try to schedule a weekend um, a weekend estimate so someone can come in because there is an ordinance that says once a year. If you do have an absurd word of meal if, um, after this meeting, you want to stay and speak to me, then we'll get your information and try to get it handled, okay? Thank Good evening. Um, my name is Cara Wilson. I'm the uh, mother of Alexis Wilson, killed by a dog in the police. Um, and as you've heard, a running thing has been fear of the police. And on that evening, my daughter feared the police. She ran, and they killed her. Uh, the unedited body cam still has not been released. The only thing that's been released is a, an edited body cam that they tried to spin a narrative on. Um, 
I, I, I'd love to have that whole body cam released to the public. Um, I think that needs, there needs to be an audit of that. Um, those officers struck my daughter within 52 seconds, two punches to her face, and in one video I've seen, it looks like he punched her with his flashlight in his hand. After the two punches, she took off. But as she was taking off, there was a cop entering the right side of my vehicle. As that car takes off, both vehicle doors are closed. As the news, the mayor and the police reported that she aimed her car at cops, she drug two cops, that she drug, she, she was shot by the cop, that she was trying to hit, none of which was true. None of it was true. In three minutes, that child had seven bullets in her, two in her head and five down her side. He executed her from my passenger seat. He wasn't hanging out of anything. You can see that in the video, but people still look at the edited video and find fault with the way she acted that evening. She was a 19-year-old girl defending herself. She had every right to do so. So I'd really like to have that. I've, I've tried the FOIA request and I've never gotten anything back, and I know that's not your fault. Um, those are being blocked. But I'd like to have that whole body cam released, and I'd like an audit of that body cam. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Sherry Britton, 25-year resident. Um, the board knows I'm passionate about uh, Keith Freeman. Um, I know it's hard to do something with the mayor slash supervisor, but these employees, as ignorant as some of them are, um, today, even calling Village Hall, the phones were disconnected. This is not the first time that's happened. You, they want you to pay your bills. They, they send you these crazy water bills, like the gentleman was saying. Um, you couldn't even call this morning to try to make arrangements to pay the crazy water bills. Um, but again, I think that we need to start pursuing something uh, to do something about these employees, uh, specifically Keith Freeman. He has access to uh, employees, residents, records, uh, finding hours of former employees. So he has access to my personnel file. Um, you can't trust people like that. Um, what are we doing? I mean, last uh, week's board meeting when everybody was standing outside, I was outside. Um, that's crazy. What are we doing? Has anybody talked to them about that? What's going on with that? With Lacey uh, violating his heels? Uh, rights and just all types of stuff. I mean, what is the conversation? Has there been anything? What's going on with all of that stuff? As far as, you know, like, they just did it and, and nothing. I mean, it's like the police, they just, they're just outraged. I mean, it's like, Jesus Christ, come on now. Something has to give. I mean, it's bad enough we can't do anything about her, but we should be able to do something about them. Everybody is replaceable. You can't tell me that Keith Freeman, not a village employee, or they did not even matter, whatever it is, you can't tell me you can't do anything about it. He could just come in. I don't care if he's appointed every week if, she, if he's fired or somebody needs to go public and say he needs to be gone. It just hasn't happened. Same thing they did with Dorothy Brown needs to happen with him, at least say it, because this is ridiculous. I, I can say for myself, and uh, I'll see uh, any other board members, um, I am not a fan of, of, if you go to the board meetings, you sit there and you'll even watch staff and the way that they speak to elected officials on the board. So um, I feel that anybody who's been disrespectful should be, go, should be terminated and gone. Um, legislatively, hiring and firing is not within our purview, which is where we run into a lot of challenges. Uh, we have one of some of the items that were listed on here that we just overrode the veto. We'll see if there's any relief, and we say relief because a lot of times that comes through court and we try to do a cost benefit to see if it's worth going through that process um, to do it to go to take it a step further. But I think um, 
Uh, I know Trustee Tammy Brown has made some very vocal uh, statements as well. And I think the majority of them want to speak on it. Phil, how about Yeah, because he's got to go. We can't, we can't do a whole year with him in that position. I'm sorry. Good evening, residents. My name is Gerald Williams. I'm a 35-year resident of Dalton. How did we get here? Let's talk about the election. During the primary, Tiffany won by, what, 103 votes? 120. We got to do better when it comes to elections as far as coming out. You know? We got 20,000 people in Dalton. We had what? 12 or 8,000 people that voted? Not even 8,000 people. We have to do better. And with Tiffany, you got to do your homework. Look at her when she was a trustee. She had property here that shouldn't have even been occupied. But who? Does she know in the village that gave her an occupancy uh, registration to, to put somebody in the house? Okay? She, she went on Roland Martin and he asked her, would she be open to an investigation? She said, yeah. Anything that would help her clear her name? And what does she do? She goes and she vetoes it. So, you, you know. We, we got to come out and vote more as a community. Because we got 21,000 and 8,000 people, and y'all falling for it, we got to do better. That's all I got to say. Good evening. I'm John uh, Gallagher with the company Gallagher Asphalt here uh, just today to talk about a, a stack of invoices that we have to the city. And I'm sorry if I missed that uh, early on if it got voted on, but uh, we've got, um, we, we've been doing work for Dalton for about 95 years and I feel like we've always been a very good partner at Dalton and just looking for that reciprocation back to us as well. So uh, 2023, this re resurfacing program, uh, we still got $615,000 hanging out. Granted, I think a lot of that is coming from uh, the Cook County. Um, so we'd just like to know when that might be paid and then also for all the full patch repairs. I think that's about $12,000, $13,000 now. Uh, and we would like to keep supplying the help the streets um, of government. So. If, if I can, I'll find the specific ones. Your invoices have been approved by the Board of Trustees already. Okay. Uh, that was, uh, as I read off the list of people that were not um, approved because they were not in the budget, your invoices have been approved, and I believe. Most recently, there were a couple of them that were uh, approved today, but the previous um, the previous invoices have been approved months ago. Okay. I'll get you the specific dates if you want to after the meeting. If you can stick around, I'll, uh, I'll find out what those dates are. And then also, what a lot of times with vendors do email, I'll forward that email over to the finance director, the village administrator, the mayor's office, specifying when the bill has been approved, which month and year, and then that way, ask them to probe a little bit deeper, and then also gives you documentation that um, it's been processed, approved by the board, and um, assist in your efforts to the mayor. Okay. I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Come on, sister. Miss Fowler. Fowler. Taking her up, bro. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. There we go. Good evening, everyone. I want to, first of all, thank the residents for coming out. We have been fighting, fighting, fighting for the last three years. I want to thank the trustees and the clerk for the awesome job that you do. And I, I have a question because I'm tired of getting phone calls telling me that they're being harassed by the police. I've been harassed by Mr. Lace too. 
but I can deal with Mr. DeLacy just like uh, Ms. Lori Lightfoot said that she knows some things, I know some things. So my question to you guys is, Sylvester Baker, what's his role? He's an investigator for the police department. And who or who do we investigate? Oh, oh, oh. oh damn. Oh, damn. So um, he was hired to investigate everybody in the municipality. But um, when he was brought up before, because there was an issue that came about um, what you can't say because it was personnel. Um, he was he was told, and I have an email that said he only investigates the police department. But um, they kind of been using him back and forth to halfway investigate whatever they need them to at the time. So my thing of it is if if you go to work every day. And this is especially for the men. You go to work every day, and at the end of two weeks, you come home without a paycheck. What do your wife do? She puts you out. So my same sentiment is to Sylvester Baker. If Sylvester Baker, and I know we go back a long way, but you know, enough is enough. And if you're not doing your job, then that's another one that needs to be put on the list too. So we can save that money so we can pay Miss Lightfoot. Thank you.
When you or when people think you're insignificant, you die. Like, are the exact and the perfect candidate for a move that God is behind. And so what I want to say, people saying, well, what happens if she beats over this? And what happens is that it don't matter what she does because the Bible also says that when two or three are gathered in agreement, he said, I will be in the midst. So what am I telling y'all? That if you guys begin to organize your block, your community, get in the barbershop, go to, it was a place I learned about today, I think it was angels. They was up in their happy hour. Let's go to happy hours and talk about the angels. But if you all would begin to organize now, she, it's only a matter of time. You can't block what a, a woke, organized people and the guy behind them is trying to do. So what I want to tell y'all today is that a lot of information is getting ready to come up. And we can, we're going to go through the process, but if y'all don't stop, we won't stop. Because everybody who thought Dalton was insignificant and too small to care about, now I see people saying, let's do like the people of Dalton and let's stand up for ourselves. And I want to commend y'all for doing this thing. Appreciate all the comments. At this time, I see no one else standing, so I will, that will conclude citizens' comments or citizens' address. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, here, the motion and second. Second. Motion and second. I'll ask Clerk Keith for a roll call, please. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Meeting adjourned at 8.07 p.m. Right in. Trustee Brown, can I get a comment, please? How are you? Thank you. This young man right here, y'all got to put him out the building. Oh, my God. Trust, Trustee Brown gave me a hug, y'all. Can we get a public comment? Can we get a public comment? Absolutely. This meeting tonight definitely, definitely has put us back on the right track. And it starts tomorrow. So look out, everybody. Thank you so much for your prayers, your love, your support. Dalton will be back on the map soon. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Brown. Oh, my God. Listen. Thank you so much, Trustee. Wait a minute. Let me, let me just tell you this. <laughs> I'm with you when watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be ready for you, man. <laughs> we be up at night laughing at you. Oh, hey, <laughs> Y'all stop talking all that. <laughs> Look, I be trying to tell my grandson, you ain't going to get no job going in there smelling like that. And you know what? He follows you every I'm telling said, you. Did you see your dad? He just don't know. I never we appreciate social that. media. I never did. That's oh, love, my God. I cannot listen. I cannot go to, I'll be in there, listen, let me get it ready, look, we be calling each other, you, you on it, you on it, you on it, you on it, here I go, yes, I'm on it, I'll be up all time and night, I gotta get back in, here I go, he's on, is he on, he's on, I never watched you, oh my god, I am hooked. That's the highest compliment ever. Oh my God, I'm telling you, you just Thank don't you. know. Hey, I'm I am hooked. I stop. am hooked. Oh my God, I love your show. I, I be telling people, it. get on there, look, watch it. Get on there tonight, get on there. I am texting people in my phone book. Get on there, the late night crew. I do, oh my God. The late, here I go, the late night crew. Everybody, jump online. Get in there, give them your likes. We gotta boost those numbers up. So we gotta boost your numbers up. I'm we like, do, boost them. We gonna do it. I know you've do done it. Look yes, at it. Yes, Look at it. I, I oh my it God. So you just don't know. Awesome. We we love you. It's it's fifteen hundred right now. We love you. We love you here. I appreciate it so much. We love you. We will be back. Huh? She said, cut that camera off.
Yes, look at everybody. See? Look.